Well, good morning. Are we on? Good morning. And welcome to the was um, associate vicar here a number of years back. He's now the uh, but he's done a little video talk uh, that we're going to play on the screen when we get to that part of the service. So uh, he will be giving the message this morning. And, uh, so it's great to have that, that connection with somebody in church leadership on the other side of the world, um, but who's also sharing in the theme that we're exploring in these days. So as we gather in God's presence, let's take a moment to be still, and then we have an opening response before our first song. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And let's say an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. Uh, we thank you for the colours, the sunshine, the sense of a world made new. And we pray that you would meet with us this morning and renew our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, uh, let's have our opening song. Indescribable. Is this what we need to stand for? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So if you're able, let's stand to sing this.
please take a seat. So it's good as we seek God in worship to take a moment to acknowledge some of the ways in which we're not ready to meet with God. Some of the ways in which we come with unclean hands. And we need to ask for God's mercy and forgiveness so that we can make a fresh start with him. And in the context of our theme about our responsibility for creation, uh, we confess some of the ways in which we uh, have not looked after the creation entrusted to our care in the way that God might have wished. So let's take a moment to just think about that and think about ways in which we might want to make a new start in our own lives. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our Bible reading. Um, and I haven't asked anybody to do the reading, so uh, we'll have it up on the screen, and, uh, and I'll read it for us. <laughs> this is from the book Revelation, the very end of the Bible, and it's looking at the end of the earth, and the new heavens and the new earth. When the Lamb opened the sixth seal, I looked, and there came a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree drops its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll, rolling itself up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, and the magnates, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? So now we're going to have the, uh, the talk from Nick Drayson. Greeting you from Northern Argentina. It's actually winter here, but it's quite warm. Uh, and as you can see, we're, we're in a forested region. Most of the area around here is, is scrub forest, uh, one, one sort or another. And it's the, uh, the largest area of forest after the Amazon in South America. So that's the, where I'm speaking to you from. And joining you at this time of the season of creation, when churches around the world are thinking and acting together on, on the whole question of, of loss of biodiversity, climate change, and, and the problems of how to care for creation. <coughs> Latin America is a beautiful continent with stunning uh, variety of, of habitats, and from mountains and plains to, to forests and jungles and the sea, of course, the coast. And where we are in the north, as I say, it's mainly mainly forested, and the people we work with are 
the indigenous people who are hunter-gatherers, so the, the forest is their home. And in recent years, we have seen a, a huge growth in what we call the extractive uh, industry, mining and logging particularly. Logging is the one that affects the people here most. And if you want to draw on the, the famous line, don't cry for me, Argentina, the, 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 the weeping is for those who are losing their forest home, where the forest once seemed so huge it would never disappear. Now huge swathes of forest are being, are being cut down, not just in the Chaco where we are, but in the Amazon of course, famously there are, there are fires and there's deliberate clearing of the forest for sowing soya and for developing cattle ranching. And that affects not only the environment, but also the people who live here, who are indeed weeping for the loss of their home. Pope Francis has reminded us that we have a common home, that we, this planet uh, we share is our home, and if, where one part of it is being destroyed, it affects those in another part. So we have a local expression of that, where to, literally, where people lived from forest fruits, from animals, from fishing, they are now facing a barren landscape. But also, of course, the, what happens to the forest where we are affects climate change in, in other parts of the world. And that is the situation we have here, as we not only care, uh, care for the people and, and help try to help them. Minster Wi-Fi, proving it's worth it. This is getting crazy. Facing a barren landscape. But also, of course, the, what happens to the forest where we are affects climate change in, in other parts of the world. And that is the situation we have here as we not only care, uh, care for the people and, and help try to help those who are fighting to protect the land. And this is something the, 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 our diocese is very heavily involved in helping helping with land rights, helping prevent logging. It's a legal and political battle very often. But also caring for creation, the fifth mark of mission to, to safeguard and help creation to flourish on the basis that what God loves, what God made, what God created, is our responsibility also to love and care for and help to flourish. And so in different ways, we seek to create, to, to pr protect and, and bless creation around us, which as I say is stunning, but is being depleted and is being degraded 
Mining, of course, is another major issue in parts of our area, in the Andes particularly. Mining which is illegal and mining which is legal both degrade and affect the environment and ultimately affect the, the planet in terms of, of climate change. So this is our situation here in Latin America. The good news is that throughout the world, God's people are waking up to, to our responsibility to care for creation. Whether this is done locally through greater care of what we do with plastic, what we do with, with recycling, how we use energy in our churches, in our homes, and so on, or whether uh, increasingly this can be done at a political level, putting pressure, particularly in democracies, putting pressure on governments to, to, to produce green and environment-friendly policies. This is something that we can do in Argentina and you can do in Britain. It's something that the Anglican Communion is doing increasingly. And I would draw your attention to some of the literature that uh, is available on websites to do with the Communion Forest, to do with the Anglican Communion Environmental Network, organizations like Arosha. There's an immense amount that can be done locally, both where you are and where we are, and globally through policy making and influencing those in power. So we have a wonderful creation to protect. It is in danger through extractive industries. And uh, we, are care, we are called to care for our neighbors and also to care for, for what God allows and what God has made. So as I send this greeting, I would encourage you as you look at Eco Church, as you look at the season of creation, as a congregation, don't feel there's nothing you can do. There's a huge amount you can do. But we are already feeling the effects of climate change. We, perhaps in our area, because of deforestation, are contributing, sadly, to climate change. But we're also experiencing unusual weather. Floods, snow, whirlwinds, heat waves, fires, just like in other parts of, of Europe. This is surely because of the heating up of the planet and protecting the forest and the mountains and, and, and our environment is a huge uh, step that we need to take as part of our Christian discipleship. So please join us as we protect the forest and as we join you in protecting the planet uh, against unnecessary climate change, which becomes climate injustice and climate emergency. So it's a serious business. We have a wonderful world to live in and to protect. So may we take this seriously, recognize the danger we're in, and turn to the Lord in, in prayer, but also with action. Don't cry for me, Argentina, but speak out for me, Argentina. God bless you. So a good reminder there from Nick about how the earth is the Lord's. Uh, planet Earth is not our possession to do with whatever we like. But it's been entrusted to us by God to, to look after and to make fruitful. Uh, and the signs are that we're not managing to do that very well at the moment. Um, at the end of the service, do have a look at our Eco Church display here, which picks up on one or two of the things that Nick was saying. Uh, there's also a, a, a survey there for us to think about our own carbon footprint. And do have a look at the resources on the sheet that's on the tables. The books and websites there uh, contain a lot of good information to help us think about how our faith should be uh, inspiring us to think about our environment and the, and the way we live in this world uh, and some of the choices we make in our lifestyle and in our shopping. In so many different aspects of our lives, this is relevant. Uh, and we just need a bit of encouragement to make some of those connections and think about it a little bit more deeply. So I commend that to you. So shall we turn now to pray? Uh, last night I raised one or two eyebrows by going out into the churchyard and collecting conkers off the tree in the churchyard. And people wondered what the vicar was doing, grubbing around, collecting conkers. Um, Actually, it was a little, a little bit of me was slightly sad 
Because when I was a boy, you would never have been able to go past a conker tree at this time of year and find thousands of conkers just lying on the ground. They would all have been hoovered up by small boys to play conkers. And nobody seems to play conkers anymore, which is very sad. But it did mean that I could pick up a large number yesterday to help us with our intercessions this morning. So on the table, you'll see there are lots of conkers. And I invite you to take one. Choose a conker. Pick it up. Hold it in your hand. Admire it. And just take a moment quietly to contemplate it. To admire the richness of its colour. The beauty of the swirling grains on it. Uh, the smoothness of its skin. Just admire the sheer, unique, beautiful conqueriness of it in your hand. And as you do that, let's in our hearts give thanks to God for the beauty of his world. For its fruitfulness, because conkers in the end are just seeds. So we give thanks for the beauty and the fruitfulness and the abundance of the harvest in God's world. Thousands of these conkers, more than are needed to grow a couple of more trees and we marvel at this world God has made that is so full of life and the ability to renew itself and to do so beautifully and with abundance and then the conquer also reminds us of the game of conquers so we give thanks to God for our enjoyment of the world for playfulness, times of leisure, for the things that bring us together as community, for sport, for doing things together in our leisure time that deepen bonds of fellowship and friendship, for the gift of Sabbath, for time off, to reflect, to be, to be with others, to worship. We give thanks for this day. But as we reflect on the game of conquers, at the heart of that game is the idea of destroying the other person's conquer. There is destructiveness built into that game. It's funny, isn't it? When people are involved, often things get smashed. And so we reflect on that a little bit. It's strange how in the game of conquers, people take credit for the strength of their conquer. It's nothing to do with us. It's just the gift of the conquer. But somehow we think we're better than the other person if we can smash their conquer. So we reflect on the tendency, even in play sometimes, for things to get destructive. We reflect on a world that is full of brokenness, where people don't always treat each other fairly, where sometimes people feel entitled to more than others. We reflect on a world full of violence, on a national scale in Ukraine, but perhaps closer to home, people who suffer violence in the home And we pray for God's healing and forgiveness and mercy in the midst of broken lives and a broken world. One of the other things about the conch tree, the horse chestnut tree, is that many of them are suffering from blight. Many of them at the moment are diseased. So the horse chestnut tree can stand as a symbol of all of God's creation. That we can't take its health and well-being for granted. 
it needs to be looked after, cared for. It needs, needs to be carefully managed and stewarded. And so we pray for God's diseased creation. For those parts of the world that are suffering from drought. Or from flooding. From forest fires. From rising sea levels. For those whole nations where land is becoming harder to farm because the weather is becoming too extreme. And so people are having to leave home in order to make a new start somewhere else. So we hold before God our ailing creation, our ailing world. Where its fruitfulness and its beauty have been spoiled. And so finally we pray for our own relationship. Not just with the conquer, but with all of creation. We reflect on asking God to show us what we can do in our lives to play our part. Maybe only in very small changes, but to become more aware and thoughtful about the choices we make in our shopping. Making ourselves aware of the issues that other people face. Showing more compassion for the victims of climate change. And we ask God for a spirit of repentance, that our hearts and minds may be nudged into step with the Holy Spirit, that we may wake up to a fresh sense of all that we can do to care for God's creation and be better stewards of it. So, Father, we pray that you would hear us this morning. You know the burdens of our hearts. We pray that you would hear us, heal us, and have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, Open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> now I think we have another song. Shall we stand to sing if you're able?
So as we draw near, let's form a semicircle, shall we? Round, round here. around the table. <laughs> yeah. This gives us more of a sense of community together. Supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So rejoice in God's new creation. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
So let us pray together. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So let's write the song. Okay, let's remain standing for our closing song. It's been lovely seeing you here this morning. Um, I'm a little overwhelmed at the number of faces I don't recognise, which is lovely. 
Um, do please stay for coffee afterwards before our next service at 11 o'clock. Um, if you're here for the first time, or if I haven't had the chance to connect with you, do come and say hello. You will have noticed that there are lots of opportunities for other people to be involved in leading this service. Um, so if you'd like to be involved, um, whether in doing a reading, um, or maybe in helping with the administration of communion, it would be nice to have a separate team doing the gluten-free, um, or whether behind the scenes helping set up with the tech and so on, do please drop me an email and let me know that you're interested and we can, we can then include you uh, in a more active way. Um, otherwise, just to underline the, uh, the eco theme, have a look at the exhibition, do take away the, the, the discussion sheet with, with questions for house groups and some suggested websites and reading. Um, and on this week's notice sheet, uh, there's lots of good things there. I, I'm not going to go through them all, but can I just flag up the Messiah concert coming up in November? There's an early bird discount if you're quick in the next couple of weeks, and all the proceeds uh, come to the minister for that. And just on a. Yep. Oh, next. Just noticed it's not on the notices. Next Monday night, we're going to be having an evening service at 7 o'clock, so Monday the 10th of October. And it's going to be worship like we've done this morning, but a time to have extended worship. It's, it's hard on a, on a Sunday morning to be able to get into extended worship with the time constraints. So we're going to have an evening where we're going to have some more worship, prayer, reflection. Please, please, please come along. It's something that also can be in the feedback sheets. So we're putting this on. It's going to be a monthly thing. Um, we've got one on 10th of October, one on 14th of November, this side of Christmas. So please come along next Monday night at 7 o'clock in the Minster for time of praise and worship. Thank you, Thank you Jane. So, week, week Monday, 7 o'clock in here. Yep, have it all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I apologise, Jonathan, I should have asked before. Um, the, someone's pointed out on the notice sheet, it's a bit confusing because Grave Talk is on at the same time as Friendship Group in the same room. That's because it's going to be a low-key grave talk. We're going to use the uh, cards as part of the friendship group and maybe have a subset going on. So we're hoping that you'll come along and, in, and enjoy that. Think about what you most value in life. Come and chat, come and have a coffee. Um, you are more than welcome. Peter Harris in the room, so there'll be games as well as grave talk questions as well. Brilliant. Thank you. So friendship group and grave talk one and the same this week. Um, and finally, just to say, I hope you've enjoyed being together this morning and, and uh, meeting with God in this way. Part of our discipleship is the free offering of our time, our talents, our resources. Um, that's something for each of us to be thinking about. And, uh, and, and there is always at this service uh, a retiring collection. So just think a little bit about generosity and whether you're able to support the work and ministry of the minister uh, in, in any way. Um, but just to draw your attention to that and, uh, and encourage you to, to be reflecting about that. Okay, Ben, have we got any more slides? <laughs> so, so this one, right? Okay. Let's, 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 let's not have too much of a good thing. Um, the Lord be with you. And so will you. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Different words, but yeah. <laughs>